Chris from Key Farm. Um, I know a lot of you are here because of this golf cart. So I'm doing a golf cart update video. Uh, there was a first video where I just went over the golf cart and told you my intentions. The second video, I pretty much built it. The third video, I'm going to discuss some of the things I've done since then. Alright, first things first. In the starting video, this thing went 16 miles an hour with this sprocket on it. But, on the low end, it had enough power to run up and down the road and around, you know, the pasture at the farm and around the yard. It had plenty of power for that. But if I ever got it in, like, really tall hay, it struggled. It just didn't sound like it was... It, it just sounded like it was struggling. So, I went to Tractor Supply and uh, I bought a 12-tooth sprocket for the back, whereas this one is a 10. Bigger, bigger the sprocket on the back, the more power you have. So, that's only about a 20% difference, but 20% is probably all that I needed. And it did. It gave me more power on the bottom side, but it slowed the cart down to 13 miles an hour. That's with the, with the 12 tooth that's currently on it. I, I haven't went back to this one, but I can because of what I'm about to tell you. Alright, my brain got a little confused. I watched some of these videos about these mini bikes, okay? These mini bikes, I'll put a picture of them so you know what I'm talking about. I love these little Coleman mini bikes. I don't have one, but I kind of want one. So, um, the throttle stop screw in these mini bikes comes spot welded so you can't turn it. Most people just cut it off. Well, in my mind, I got jumbled up that the Predator was like that. So, all this time I was working on this thing and driving it around, uh, I never turned the throttle stop screw. Come to find out, in that video where you see me coming over the bridge coming towards the camera and I come back and I tell you it was going 16 miles an hour yeah that was only three-quarter throttle so um, keep in mind I changed the sprocket before I did what I'm about to tell you at 9 o'clock one night, one night I'm in there on the couch and I'm thinking wait a minute this is a predator this isn't one of those little mini bikes so I go out here and the throttle stop screw is not spot welded and you can turn it freely. So I fire up the cart, I back that throttle stop screw off, and I take off down the road in what used to be a 13 mile an hour cart, because remember I changed the sprocket. It goes immediately over 20. 20, 21, 22, I'm talking about immediately. Just, just backing off that screw. And uh, I have since backed it down a little. I don't know what was going on, whether I, I was getting uh, not enough air back into the tank or too much fuel going out. But if I really kept my foot in it, I could go about a quarter mile and it would shut off. And then it would crank right back, but it would shut off. So I backed that screw off a little bit. I'm down to 20 miles an hour. So I went from 13 to 20, basically. But um, that's 7 miles an hour with the big sprocket. If I put the little sprocket back on there, I should have plenty of power on the bottom side because now it will wind up to its full RPM. And where I was going 16, I should be able to get 23, 24 miles an hour out of it now. Haven't done it yet, but I can. But right now it's going 20, and 20 is plenty fast enough for everything I need to do around here. Alright, now, let me show you some things that I've done to the cart in the meantime. Alright, first and most obvious is the lime green seed. That's my first attempt at upholstery. I stitched the corners, but I left too much of a point on them. Next time I'll take the point off some more. I put a throttle cable on it. I added a spring just to help it return a little better. But there is my throttle cable and it's hooked to the pedal. It runs down there and I used half of a cable clamp. The end of that cable right there is in that cable clamp and then this rod that's already hooked to the foot feed so there is my fuel pedal works pretty good oh I did build a stand for the seat out of one before's it raised it up three and a half inches and my clearance between the gas cap and the bottom is about two inches I also did that so um, I can have more room for a 
420 when the time comes. Okay, back here. This is the new sprocket right here. That's a 12 tooth versus a 10 tooth. Not a lot of difference, but a little bit of difference. Now this sprocket, when it was over there, those set screws were not enough to hold it on that shaft. So you see that silver thing right in the center? That's a collar. I added that collar to keep that sprocket from walking over. Now this one has bigger set screws and it doesn't walk, but I left the collar on there anyway. And I put another collar on there just to kind of stabilize things. Okay, you may see that I have the second bearing on. That was always in the plan, but the first version didn't have the second bearing. There's plenty of bearings inside this case, but just for the sake of longevity, I went ahead and added the second bearing. It, everything runs smooth as silk, so we're in good shape right there. Uh, tires. So this thing has 30-year-old tires on it. So I ordered these. These are just your typical lawnmower golf cart tires. They are 18 by 8.5 by 8. And this is what they look like mounted. I got a portable tire changer. One of those that they sell from Harbor Freight. Mine didn't come from them, but it's identical to them. And uh, you can mount that tire in less than 5 minutes. So... I'm getting ready to paint, but I wanted to see what they look like. And now look, to be honest, I want these to be on the front, and I want these to be on the back. Yeah, I know, that's a pretty impressive tire. I had something like that on a four-wheeler one time. It was fantastic. But I may end up having these all the way around. I don't know if I need that much on the back. By the way, did you know that just a regular boat trailer tire will go on there? Sure will. I know. It looks ridiculous. So this is satin black paint. I've just, you know, sprayed a little to see if that was the shine that I was wanting. I knew I didn't want semi-gloss. I knew I didn't want flat. So that is satin in the middle, and I like it. All right. Now you saw where I had the spare tire on, the boat trailer. These rims have some rust in them, so I've been sanding them. What I need to do is get new valve stems for everything, and then go ahead and get four new tires on it but I'm gonna black out the rims by the way I'm going for black and lime not a lot of lime a little bit of lime I wanted neon I ordered neon it came lime what you gonna do all right here's the top now this particular top right here in the valleys they had cracks almost every one of these valleys had cracks so a buddy of mine had some flex seal that he was not going to use, so I, there was a crack right there. So I flex sealed every valley on the top. I'm going to tape up this aluminum ridge and, well, I don't know, I might paint it. But anyway, I shot a little bit of lime green on one of the uprights just so I could see what it looks like. I need to take them off and and all of it's going to be... Anyway, the, lime, the, the uprights are going to be lime green. The top will be black. And hopefully, I don't know how Flex Seal works with paint, but we're soon to find out. So, I put the word out on Facebook that I needed a bed for this, because this is going to be a utility golf cart. One of my friends had one of these old pull-behind uh, trailers, it had bad tires on it, just like I knew I would find one that had bad tires on it, because everyone I've ever seen had at least one bad tire. So, all I gotta do is strengthen the front up here. That's no problem. I can, I can, I can, I can make all that straight. I can make that straight. This is the old tailgate. It's gonna go on there sideways. It's not gonna go on there long ways. Now, these are pretty flimsy. So, I'm gonna take some angle iron and um, strengthen it up. I don't think it's gonna be necessary for it to dump. I mean, I could spend an extra hour on it and make it dump but I don't think that's going to be terribly necessary oh one thing when I was sitting on a piece of plywood um, this thing was terribly loud but since I built the seat you know the engine is directly under the seat so you still get a lot of sound out the back 
and I'm about to show you the cover that covers that up. But just building the seat quiet, quietened, qu made it quieter. Alright, so here's the rest of my parts. Here's the panel that's going to cover the section between the bed. I got those old panels. Those are not going back on. Uh, there's the old seat. That's more upholstery work that I'm not looking forward to. You may be wondering, why is he dressed like that? Well, he's dressed like that because it's Sunday afternoon. It's kind of almost right after church. I'm home by myself. Family's gone uh, school clothes shopping. So I uh, figured, why not make this video? So, let's see. I'm walking back up here to the cart to see if there's anything else that I have missed. Oh, my seat riser. Now, keep in mind, I'm still running the original muffler. So, to let exhaust out, I had to cut that notch because you could actually smell wood burning. Now, I'd like to have a header pipe that points down somewhere. But, if I do that, then I have to put a muffler on the end of the header pipe. And Hey, look. I don't mind telling you, I don't have much in this project, and I'm not looking to get a fortune to it, into it. But, it's been a tremendous amount of fun. Uh, I'll be honest, that first trip over to the farm where I was running it back and forth, um, my chain was sliding over, because that sprocket kept walking on that shaft before it had that collar right there, and uh, I had to work on it a lot. But, in the last 15 miles, I mean, I've, I've had it to my buddy's house, and uh, he's got a lot of trails behind his place. Um, I've rode those trails. I've had it out on the, I've allegedly had it out on the road and rode about eight miles one day. Um, I really haven't had to do anything to it in the last probably 15 miles that I've rode it. So it's getting there. It's a slow process, but it's getting there. This is Chris from Key Farm. Love God, love people. Oh, a little heads up. Since I repowered this uh, golf cart, I've kind of got it in my mind that I can repower anything. Check this out. Friends, this is a late 40s model uh, Farmall H tractor. There's the front end. The front end mounts to the front of that piece of channel iron right there. All it needs is a motor. I don't have a motor. Harbor Freight makes a motor that's 22 horsepower. All I'm going to say is that tractor didn't have a lot more than 22 horsepower new. Back in the 40s, engines didn't have a lot of power. So I'm going to do a video where I'm going to go around this thing and I'm going to say what I want to do to it. And y'all watch that video. And if you watch that one, comment on it because that's about a thousand dollar project and to do that I'm gonna really need some motivation from you so I don't know if I already said it but if I didn't love God love people and keep watching key farm hey when you see that picture of Harley pop up hit that subscribe button